And then I saw this wall of white shoot over the lip, come right at me, hit me on my chest, knock me back. I'm shooting down this couloir, snowboarding on my back, thinking to myself, this is so wrong. <laughs> but I had to figure out what to do next. What's the one next thing I need to do at this moment? That's what I kept asking myself. What's the one next thing? Stephen shares with audiences how to make fear their friend. So often people look at what I do and say, oh wow, you must have no fear. It is the complete opposite. I have great fear. And the reason that I love fear and I'm so happy I have it is because it keeps me safe. I've just learned how to make fear my friend, turn it from foe to friend. And the way I do that is by acknowledging that fear inside me, inside my body, physically, because when I feel fear, I feel it in my gut. Does anyone else feel fear in their gut? Yeah, I mean, that's the place I think many of us carry that fear and hold that fear. And so often the fear is a consequence of thoughts. And we can control our thoughts because those are three things we can control. One of them being our thoughts. The other is our words and our actions. That's all we can control and those are all from ourself. I get caught up sometimes thinking I can control others. And it always ends in miserable failure when I believe that and I try to do that. So, when I remind myself to just control myself and those three things, it helps me, especially when dealing with fear. In business, fear comes up at different times, but you've been there. If you haven't been there, there's others you can talk to, you can tap into who've been in a similar situation. And if no one's ever been in that situation, how exciting is that? You get to call yourself a pioneer and you get to do something no one else has done. And that is an incredible thing as well. From his years as a mountain guide, Stephen understands human nature and how to bring out the best in the human spirit. We are not alone. I, I, even though I'm a soloist when I'm snowboarding down these mountains, I'm not alone. I don't do this stuff alone. No one is alone in any way, shape or form. We all lean on each other, whether we know it or not. And when we realize that and have this appreciation for the interconnectedness that we all have with not only each other, in this room, on our team, in the organization, but also with every human being, with every living being, it is amazing. Nothing is alone. Everything leans. And now, just in brief, I want to talk about mountain guiding. And what I did is, as a team leader, as a mountain guide, sounds like it's similar to what you all do when you have a trial and you have to compile a team of people who you might not know very well, but who have similar goal to help the client succeed in the best possible way to win the case or settle in the best possible way. And that was what I did as a guide. I would take people who oftentimes didn't even know each other with the common goal of climbing the Grand Teton. And I would start by just teaching them the most basic things, which is how to use our feet in rock climbing. And then we would get into the technical aspects of the rope and how to tie in and that the rope was our lifeline. And I love that the rope is a lifeline for a climbing team because any team is connected. You might not have the physical rope between you that you can hold on to, but you are connected in a common goal. And that's powerful. And you're connected as a firm, as an organization, as a group of individuals with a common goal. And that is a powerful thing. And you have great leaders who you can learn from and be inspired by. And that is something that I did as a mountain guide. 
When Stephen failed to summit Mount Everest, he discovered a new definition of success. So I made the choice based on being the leader and talking to my team to turn around and to end the Seven Summits snowboarding quest right then. And I had some incredible turns coming down the north face of Mount Everest. And it was also, you know, for a long time, really bittersweet. I, I felt like a failure, even though I got to snowboard on the north face of Mount Everest, even though I knew I made the right decision because an avalanche came down the following day and wiped out the whole face. We would have, would have surely been killed as a team. But I still had this feeling in my gut that I was a failure for several years. And I don't know exactly what it was, but it was a mental shift where I just realized that was the best decision I've ever made in my life. I saved my life and the lives of my team. And it's not the traditional barometer of success to turn around, but to me it's the new barometer of success to know when to, to settle, to know when to compromise, to know when to turn around and change focus. The first question people were asking is, are you gonna go back? You know, when are you gonna go back? You have a track record here, three of the previous seven you failed on and you went back to until you succeeded. When are you going back to Everest? And I said to them, you know, I'm not going back to Everest. I tried it. I'm done with the seven summits. I am complete with this goal. It is time to change directions. It is time to let this one go. If I went back the dangerous hard way again, I think I would have probably died. And if I went the easy way with all the people and the fixed ropes, that would have gone against my values to do that. That would have been for the wrong reasons to go only for glory or only to tick it off. And I do things because they're important to me internally, because they touch my heart. That's why I climb mountains. That's why I connect with people. It's because it feels good and it feels like the right thing to do and it jibes with my values. So I didn't want to compromise those. And it's not the normal form of, of success you know, turning around on a mountain and ending it. But really it is. It's the new form of success insofar as following my heart and having it lead me to you here today.